All right. So, uh, IGN decides to strike again. As we all know, you can't spell ignorant without IGN. Uh, this was reviewed by Jarrett Green, and we're going to do a direct comparison by the review for Mortal Kombat 1, right? Which was uh, nigh on just over a year ago. Because I'm curious, because I, I'm i not playing the video, I listened, to, like I listened to the video, I decided to come check out the article so that way we could actually see the text for ourselves. And it's been a really long time basically since we've had a direct sequel. Since Budokai Tenkachi, or how you, you know what I'm saying, right? Tenkachi, Siri, Tenkachi, Kaichi. You know what I'm saying, right? It's been a long ass time. So this is a direct sequel. And I've said this many times since, like, the game has come out, that it, it is 100% just a game made for the fans, right? They don't care about balance or anything like that. Everything from the top to the toe is all just about pleasing the fans of Dragon Ball. And that is very exciting, right? Um... It says it's in balance in ways that are both annoying and accurate. So this this right here, uh, this is the part where he came up against Great Ape Vegeta and Shaddy's Nappy. Right? Menus are labyrinthian. Training tips are sparse and sometimes not very useful. See, this is where I took issue with it. I actually think the menus are perfectly fine. It tells you exactly what you're getting. You know, you go to a menu, has a nice little animation, it shows you exactly what you're going to get. I went through all, I think I've gone through nearly every component of the training part, right? Because I wanted to learn all the mechanics, especially all the defensive mechanics and stuff like that. And there is a lot. To say that it is sparse and sometimes not very useful, it's just stupid. I found it extraordinarily useful. It explains, you know... What happens if, you know, what do you do if you're being knocked back and you're about to hit the ground? What can you do to get out of it? Or well, how do you counter with this or that? Like, it's just weird. But every battle is crafted with the sole purpose of putting the Dragon Ball fighting fantasy as it appears in, in the anime into our hands. And it does that, like, 100%, right? Um, apparently, it's not marred by responsive issues. Well, I, I recently tried out Budokai 3, Tenkaichi 3, on the PS2, just to sort of get familiar with the game. And so Sparking Zero leaves it for dead. Sparking Zero is all smooth and lubed, right? Um, the few areas Sparking Zero tr truly does try to innovate, primarily with its branching story mode and create your own battles toolkit. There's also a lot of what-ifs. There's what-if stories that you can try out and, or, or play as in there as well. Um, I don't know the whole story when it comes to Dragon Ball. I'm starting to learn it, though. I'm starting to learn it, right? But a lot of it is kind of like just a refresh, you know, for, for maybe for those that have never played it, like myself, don't really know much about it. Uh, but also there's, like, what-if scenarios as well, right? Plus you can unlock the, the Sparking Zero episodes. I don't know if they're different, but all I see is, like, it'll come up going Sparking Zero, you know, and that's an episode, right? Um... But playing this brawlers can sometimes feel just as much like a labor of love as the effort to resurrect the series in the first place. Arena fighters don't have a lot in common with traditional cousins. Instead of the fight taking place on a horizontal plane, they, they pair full 3D movement in largely open spaces with slimmed down moveless trading technical complexity for spatial tactics. Tenkaichi, for, well, you've got both offensive and defensive moves, right? So apart from your standard like punchy kick, like, you, you know, just mash the button, punch, kick, whatever. Or mash in the other button to do your, your blast. You then also have moves available to you by holding down, like, say, right trigger on the Xbox controller. That allows you to have access to, like, two further additional offensive and two additional defensive moves. Not to mention, you can also, like, transform as well, depending on the character you've chosen. Right? Uh, Tenkaichi... Uh, Further distance itself from other games in a genre like Power Stone by turning up the speed, replacing travel objects with big environmental features that can be blown up, which is pretty awesome. It is pretty cool when you kick the shit out of someone and you just fucking throw them through like a mountain range, right? 
Uh, other Dragon Ball games like Xenoverse series have picked up the mantle in this particular form of arena brawling, but while both Hit and Tenkaichi captured the energy of Dragon Ball media from how quickly characters can move from the fright to the edit from from <laughs> move the fight from air to ground. I'll get it right. Me later to range them back again in these big beautiful spaces. The later always uh, the more all out experience with stamina bars with tons of flair. Right? So let's just I, I just want to skip down because I don't want to like wrap it on too long, right? But it's IGN and they give it a seven. Like <laughs> they, they they give it a they give it a seven. Right? They also gave, interestingly enough, Mortal Kombat 1 an 8. Now, comparing these two directly. Good. Hang on, what's this other one say? Oh, great. Fuck you. Right. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is a final flash from the past. Well, what's wrong? This is, this is what these developers don't understand, and these journalists... Right, is that the reason why these franchises are very popular and good, by and large, is because they give the fans what they want. Sparking Zero gives the fans exactly what they want. I mean, not everyone's going to be happy, but by and large, if you're a Dragon Ball fan, your dick going to get hard. You know what I'm saying? And they just say it's good. It's just good. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is a final flash from the past, sometimes to a fault, but the feeling of traveling back to a simpler time when games didn't have to be balanced and competitive to be fun is still a good one. Right? What else does he say? Um, sometimes it's demonstrated by its archaic menus and remedial training tools. I thought, to be perfectly honest, I thought this was amazing. Right? Its episode battles have that kind of reaction-heavy difficulty that doesn't really exist in most games these days. AKA, you're a giant vagina, right? And the game isn't hand-holding you. It's basically going, you figure this shit out. You're a fucking flying Superman with gigantic gelled hair. Figure it out, man, right? You know, some episode battles are the kind of blah, blah, blah. More than once crossing the line between challenging and frustrating. But that's gaming, man. Like, every game out there is going to have something that's going to be challenging and or frustrating. God, journal do journalists actually play shit anymore? Or do they just, like... You know, do they just want to sit back and let the game play itself? But the feeling of travelling back to simple blah blah blah, uh, especially when the action stays so true to that it shows it's re recreating. Well, that's... And that's what we want. Reliving a story that was foundational to my youth, looking and sounding as great as I remember it, with the opportunity to alter it in sometimes dramatic new ways is clever, and the additional tools to attempt to create our own stories could ele elevate the experiment even... It's not an experiment, bro. Right? It's just the game. Now, uh, apparently it's also improved on the multiplayer. I've played, like... I think I've played one match online, because I've just mostly been playing through the story. Um... You've got different modes of play. You can either play like character on character, team battle, or like DP, whatever. Um, so I'm just trying to see what else he's like whinging about because it's a seven, right? Um, I think he's. I think he's. I, I think. He, I think he must got hit by the great ape. The great ape fucked him up, right? So, you've got to have perfect defense, apparently, if you're fighting against some of these, like, super powerful characters, because normal attacks do shit all. It's unclear up front what conditions must be met to unlock these alternative stories. You can lower the difficulty on by 5x5 five by five basis, um, but these special tasks must be completed on the standard difficulty. That's true, yeah. If you lower the difficulty, just remind yourself that, yeah, you, you won't unlock the additional stuff, right? Um... So you got custom battles that you can set up as well, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, standard figure change, but sometimes dramatic new outcome. Blah, 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 blah. Right? I'm not seeing like I'm not seeing a whole lot of complaining. There's definitely an old school approach to a lot of progression systems. Yeah, because every character obviously you can level up. 
uh, proficiency is wise as well. Um, you get in-game current. This is the other thing too. We actually, like, we actually have, right, an in-game currency with no store. Like, there's an in-game store, an in-game currency. And I've talked about this Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising as well. I think it's the only other fighting game that's doing it. Where you have an in-game store and you have an in-game currency. Right? You can't buy the currency anywhere else. You have got, unless it was part of like, say, like the Ultimate Pack or something like that, where you get a nice big starting chunk because you bought the game at a certain, you know, either Deluxe or Ultimate Edition or whatever. I don't know if Deluxe came with it, but Ultimate did. But you earn, you quite, earn quite a bit in-game anyway. Right? Um... And they've got like a couple of music packs, which is like anime music from obviously the show, right? Obviously the season pass, but like, you know, there is no sort of like, oh, uh, you know, if you go to the online store, you can spend real world money to purchase X or Y. Like I haven't, I mean, like, unless, it's, unless I'm missing something, it's not in there, right? It's not in there at all. So that's a good thing too. It is a rarity. It definitely is a rarity. It says the menu is a hassle to navigate, often taking you all the way back to the top instead of la layer instead of letting you go back to one screen at a time. You can customize your character's abilities and costumes to be used in all modes, but these modes don't have paths to customization. Well, this just sounds like nitpicky bullshit. Anyway, if we come over to Mortal Kombat... <laughs> ah, this is my forte now, boy. Step out of my ring! The bone crunching gameplay of Mortal Kombat 1 is some of the best the series has ever seen. Well, it's not bone crunching, really, actually. Everything sounds like you're hitting a fucking soft melon. Everything's squishy. Even the combat. You play something like, like Tekken 8, right? And you're punching and kicking each other. It sounds like gunshots going off, right? You feel like you're hitting something. In Mortal Kombat 1, it just feels like you're constantly hitting soft tissue. Ah, oh, but that's how it's based. Shut the fuck up, right? I don't want it to sound realistic, I want it to sound fun, right? We had this in the earlier, even all the way back in the 2D games, we used to kick and punch people, uppercut, right? Everything just crack, crack, just everything was amazing. This bone crunching crap only comes in possibly when you do like a, you know, like the Fatal Blow or whatever, right? Uh, some of the best this series has ever seen. Yeah, the check cleared. Thanks to the game-changing cameo system, yeah. Uh, let's change that to game-breaking cameo system. This is what I this is what I mean, right? Maybe IGN is racist against uh, Japanese people because you know Mortal Kombat's American company, right? I'm just saying, man. Like you know, great. It, like, let's be honest here. Like the 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 Sparking Zero review should be. If it's a 7, we know what they're like, you know, too much water. If it's a 7, just add 2 points on and you got your game. Right. NetherRealm delivers a fantastic single player story. Oh yeah, the check cleared with these people. I mean, I didn't mind the main campaign story, but let's, let's, let's just calm your tits. Fantastic. However, the new invasions mode is a grind and the online options feel dated. My god, there's actually some truth in there. Right? The new cameo system is excellent. No, it's not. These are smart changes to the fighting mechanics that address many of the fundamental issues that cropped up over MK11's life. See, this is what I experienced. Right? When I, when I have spoken to certain only pros and stuff like that. Mortal Kombat 1 sounds like their dream jerk-off game to, to get rid of the bad taste of MK11. Because in MK11, oh, they were restricted. No, you couldn't just take off like half the... Well, I don't think you could, but I mean, I didn't come across it in any online play that I did, right? And again, we're talking about the casual fan base here, not like the less than like 0% of people that play this shit for a living, right? I'm talking about average normal people, okay? Mortal Kombat 11 felt more like a Mortal Kombat grounded game than MK1, right? 
Fantastic. Yeah, shut up. To be the gold standard of the genre. You mean the copying Marvel Phase 4 singular writer? God, jeez. I mean, do, you, do your balls tickle the chin when you write this review from the deep throat? Certain elements of online play are starting to feel dated. Certain elements? You mean like the whole thing? Right? Majors mode is not nearly engaging. Well, it's not. It's crap. Uh, still Mortal Kombat 1 marks a new beginning for the franchise. It's a very exciting launching point for the new next era. Oh, God. No, it's not. Boy, oh, boy. I'd love to see this. I'd love to see them review this a year later. Actually, no. Don't, don't say that. Right? They also put in microtransaction reaction. Oh, this, this must have been written by True Underdog. On the plus side, the invasions... Hang on. On the plus... I'm just doing that zoom in, zoom out. Fucking camera shit he does. There's no pay to win. There are new boards uh, to play every season. Oh my god. Like, talk about... Talk about taking a huge amount of, like, illegal substances and turning that frown upside down. Right? To say... Yes, invasions is free. So is a kick in the balls, right? Doesn't make it good. Weekly towers a cycle just like in Towers and Time and MK11. No, we actually properly got Towers of Time now in MK1, right? There was nothing like that. That was just that was just stupid, right? The only thing that you got any any rewards out of, right, was the challenge tower, like the seasonal tower. From memory, anyway, because I barely played it in its a, in in its uh, Mesa form, because running around was just a waste of time, right? If you enjoy invasions and its gimmicky battles and RPG elements, there will always be something to play. Again, a kick in the balls is free, right? It's it can't be overstated how gorgeous MK1 looks. I've actually gone back to MK11, right? And I think MK11 actually beats it in graphics. I think I think MK11 actually looks better. Right? And you want to know why? I'll give you a why. I'll give you a reason. It's because Mortal Kombat 1 was supposed to be another different fighting game. That's why everything was all bright and colourful and flying all around the screen. Because it was supposed to be Injustice 3. That's why it doesn't feel like a Mortal Kombat game, because it isn't! Right? And yes, we're still staring at a blank screen. I thought when they brought in online practice that we'd have, at the very least, you know, some numbskull over at Netherrealm would actually implement. Right? They would actually implement you choosing your character and you just going into, like, choose a stage, Go into practice mode yourself. So you could have online practice with people, but you could also practice offline while you're waiting. But no. Right. Oh, I fucking hate the tutorial, man. It's just... It builds upon the great work done in MK11. Right. I actually prefer, I actually had more fun playing the tutorial stuff in like both Tekken 8 and Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Right? Far better as far as I'm concerned. Far better. Right? And that's because the whole game, these games, feel like they're, you know, well, I mean, I know people complain about Tekken 8 in terms of combat is different to Tekken 7. But it still felt like, you know, they were still giving fans forgetting the microtransactions because at that point we didn't know it still felt like like fans of Tekken were getting a Tekken game right and there's a ton to unlock for everybody yeah does he mention how grindy that is because the grind for your character masteries is still retarded like it's so bad like it's just it's just the worst thing man Right? Does he actually say this? But invasions? No, it turns into... No, he's just talking about invasions again. 
Right, every character in Cameo has a damage type, which is complicated, type damage, which, fuck it, no one cares about talismans. Right, still talking about invasions. Oh my god, right, this is, this is how you know they cooked this review, the amount of effort and time they spent on just talking about invasions. Right, trying to talk up that shitty game mode. Right. While I wouldn't say anything needs outright fixing. Can you stop letting children... What is, what is this? Are these, are these reviews that they've done from old Mortal Kombat games? They give Ultimate MK3 a 7, Mortal Kombat Trilogy a 4.1, Mortal Kombat 2 and the 32X a 7... You f you having a, you having a laugh. I gotta see this shit. Oh, oh, yeah, you're getting destroyed. Yep, you're getting destroyed. These people have no idea about Mortal Kombat. It's, you know, you know, it's interesting actually, like when we get into like the 3D stuff, the reviews get better. Right? Unless it's like a handheld port. Just, by the way, you can't see the number here. They gave Mortal Kombat 2011 an 8. Right, you can go if you go check out every IGN Mortal Kombat review. They gave it an eight. <sighs> breathe, fate, breathe. Anyway, catch you next time.